Okay, so I must sincerely uh, apologize for the previous two videos. The sound was was terrible. Um, I hope you can hear it. I really do. If you put earphones in, then you would be able to pretty much make out what I was saying. But I need to, unfortunately, continue. I, I can't go back and, and redo those ones. So uh, email me if it's really a problem. Please email me. Okay, but now we're going to move on and we're going to just have a quick look at friction. Now remember that we have contact forces, right? If two objects are in contact with each other, that's a contact force. And basically we can break up this contact force into, we, we've seen this already now, into a normal force and a tangential force. Okay? Now let's quickly look at the normal force. Um, a normal force, these pictures help us with the normal force. If you've got a block that's at rest on a plank and you've got a gravitational force down, then the normal force is going to be the perpendicular contact force. It's a contact force, but it's the perpendicular contact force and it is equal to that downward force because the acceleration is zero. Now say now you take your hand and you press down on that brick, then the plank is going to deform okay, and basically get to a point where this normal force balances the downward force of your hand and the gravitational force. So that's what the, the normal force does. As you increase this downward force by your hand, the normal force increases to match the, the, the total downward force so that the brick is in equilibrium. So now, if you, again, if you increase your force, your hand force, then this normal force will continue to increase uh, to, to, balance, uh, to balance these two forces. And of course, there is a maximum, right? If you keep pressing down, the plank will break and then the normal force will be zero. But that's the idea, is that this normal force keeps, let's see what it says here. The normal force takes on whatever value is required to prevent whatever is pushing down on the surface from moving through the surface. So it keeps matching whatever force is applied on the surface. The surface, um, the normal force um, reacts basically with an equal and opposite force. Okay. Now that's the normal direction. What about the horizontal direction? So imagine instead of pushing down, you gently push on the brick to the right. So let's have a look in this figure 1020. Let's close that up there. So what's actually happening is that when two surfaces are in, are, are, um, in contact, you have these little bumps on each surface. And these bumps cause on, on both surfaces cause microscopic bonding between the surfaces. Okay? So now as you apply a force to the side, you'll notice that it, say now you want to push a book or your laptop or something across a surface, there you, there's a certain force where um, if you're applying within a certain range, then that book or that laptop or whatever, it doesn't move. And you can keep increasing your force and, um, and it still doesn't move. And so what's happening is that you're applying this force, okay? But these little bonds are resisting any kind of m tangential motion, okay? And then again, in the same way as the normal force, if you increase your hand force, the, con the tangential contact force will also increase, all right? It will, and, but still the acceleration is zero, meaning the block is not moving. And if you increase it even more, then the, the, that friction force, that tangential friction force increases even more to match what you are applying. Look, the friction force is always, the static friction force is always matching what you're applying. If you apply this much, it matches you, it resists you. If you apply more, it keeps resisting you with the same uh, magnitude, but opposite direction, obviously. And you keep increasing it. And what's happening is you've got these 
microscopic bonds between the surfaces. But as you can see, it gets to this point where it looks as though the surface is going to break free. Okay? Sounds like a Queen song. Okay? But, and so then you're going to get to a point, and this is the, the maximum friction force. And if you exceed your applied force slightly, if your, if your applied force is slightly more than that, you're going to break, break free. Wow. Yes, that's, that's a Queen song. Okay? And so now, the applied force by your hand is larger than something called the, the force of kinetic friction. So now the surfaces have been, um, these, those bonds have been broken. And then what happens is, um, you still have friction, but it's kinetic friction. You have this kind of rubbing between the two surfaces. So up until this point is static friction, static, stationary, not moving. And then, then past this point, the object will begin to move because these bonds have been broken. And then what will happen is they're still rubbing. So you have kinetic friction, friction caused by transient catching and binding of surfaces. Okay? So just as the normal force takes on whatever value is necessary to prevent motion, the force of static friction also takes on whatever value is necessary to prevent two surfaces from slipping together, pa I mean past each other. All right. So now, I think that's good enough here. Um, let's just finish off here. Uh, there's a couple of differences though. The maximum value of the force of static friction is generally much smaller than the maximum value of the normal force. Okay? Think about it. It's much easier to slide um, something sideways than it is to have broken that plank. Okay? Number two, once the maximum value of the normal force is reached, the normal force disappears. Okay? Right? There's the maximum value, and as you break through, that normal force is gone. It's zero. However, when you reach the maximum value of the static friction force, there is still a smaller but non-zero kinetic friction force. Okay. All right. So I think that's good for now. See you in the next one.